$8,000 at the time piano. It's already past the point of no return. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to restore it. Nobody wants to touch it. I would love to set a piano on fire. They just, they literally rolled the bitch out the front door. I was like, damn, you, you guys were just done. I would love to burn a piano down. Could you imagine how cool that would be? Yeah. That would be really cool. Hearing all the strings pop, too. Yeah. Fuck. Just sitting there, like, bang on it. Did you know the piano is actually a percussion instrument? No, it's not. Dead serious. I... How? It's got strings. And that's why everybody thought it was strings, but it's actually a percussion. Is this, like, how Pluto is no longer a planet? Did they just, like, change the terminology on us? I don't know. I didn't. I didn't look more into it. I was like, I'm going to bring that up. And I'll give someone to comment and argue about. Alright, I need a, a real beverage and a backup beverage. A stiff boy? A stiff boy. <laughs> so this is name pending at Mike's house. But it's just me. It's name pending... Just keeper? <laughs> so, we're going to talk a lot about things that don't matter and make zero sense. But I should look at that camera. Ooh, yes, that one, definitely. So, this is name pending. I'm keeper. Mike's pouring himself a stiff boy. And we're going to talk about things. It's all opinion-based. It's kind of like, what's the show? Points don't matter, everything's made up. That That's pretty much what we're doing. So, it's going to be good. Stay tuned for the rest and see where it goes from here. If someone didn't know me and just walk into my house, they would probably think I was an alcoholic, which is how much moonshine and liquor <laughs> and side. fucking everything else I got laying around. All right, you ready to get this bitch started? Hold on. <clears throat> Assume the position. Assume the position. Mm. Middle camera. Yes, that one. That one. That camera. So, I'm name pending. This is Keeper. And... Hey guys, this is Name Pending. I'm Mike Culberson, I'm and this Keeper. is... Keeper. Oh, I was going to say little bitch. Oh, same thing. Oh, know this. My bad. Oh, yeah, we can't do that. <clears throat> Not comfortable position. We got to do podcasting position. Okay. You got to keep reminding me. I know I'm going to do that like six times. I'm definitely going to do it at least once. I'm pretty sure the mic's off. What do you mean, off? Test one, two, test one, two, one, two, one, three. I, it's not like I'm wearing the headphones. I can't tell you. I figured I'd check. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Maybe it's our third person that's out there doing all the video stuff. Ah, uh, yeah, that third person. Cabo, are you the person? Put a headset on Cabo. Cabo's definitely not the person. No. But he's a good boy. Cabo's a good boy. Cabo, are you a good boy? There's yeah. the tail wags. Middle camera got it. Hey. Did it? Maybe. I don't know. Well, like Find us, out. because Cabo's here. Yeah. Cabo's the reason people come. But... I thought people came for Pearl. Pearl? I think she's inside. It's wet out. She's well, a princess. It's gross. <laughs> hey, you know what? It's finally getting cold enough that we can actually have Pearl sweaters. Oh, man. Pearl sweaters are the best. Pearl. Oh, so if y'all don't know, we're at my house this time. Yes, success. We finally made it to a successful place oh yeah i'm a successful place his not so much in the background you can hear the crickets and the normal footage and sounds of where you live the sirens band tucky <laughs> band tucky i normally i normally never hear sirens out here so to hear them it probably means that there's an accident off 16 either an accident or a fire yeah there's always a fire out here it's, normally it's meth it's when it rains when it rains somehow fires are more often yeah which reminds me, I need to go out there and burn that brush pile. Because <laughs> it's been raining. Heavy. I'm not in a burn bay anymore. Two years later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
I do like your area, though. I know a couple days ago, maybe weeks ago, we were talking about you were looking for like a mechanic shop, mm-hmm. more like the good old boy mechanic shop. Yeah, not someone that's on Google Maps or something. It's like it's like super kind of questionable, but you get in there and they just fucking knock it out and they do it for a reasonable price. Yeah, they're wearing overall shit kickers. You know they're you know their country. Oh home. yeah. So we're looking at houses. Obviously, we've talked about it, but we went down a road pretty close to where you live, and no joke, good old boy shop. Dude comes out, overalls, proper overalls, with the flaps hanging this way, <laughs> the other one's on the back, and you can see it, it's a little tail when he walks. Was he even wearing a shirt under the overalls? It was a white shirt that was heavily stained. Yes, my man. So the only other two options were no shirt, <laughs> which would have been acceptable, or a heavily stained shirt. Yes. And it looks like he got oil on it, new and old. And it's because, definitely become like one of these shirts because I often all the wear way up here. I often wear white shirts when I'm just covering myself in oil. I've never understood it, but every single time I see it, every time we work on a vehicle, I just wear black. You wear black anyways. You're right. Most of my clothes are dark, <laughs> <laughs> but really cool looking shop. It's not even on Google Maps. That's that's how you know. And it's it's a giant barn type garage. Yeah. So obviously they're doing pretty well. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've been around at least for a little bit to just build a, a nice little shop. But you're telling me, was it something closed here recently? So my favorite pizza place closed. The good old, the greasy one that was like New York style. You bent it and you folded yeah. it twice. Yeah, yeah. it was like, mm, I kind of hate myself when I eat this, but I love myself by the same token. And they also had, like, pasta and shit like that, yeah. right? Um, Branching out Italian. But they, yeah, I mean, but they closed, and apparently the reason that they closed is because they were leasing the, the space. And they didn't release it, or the owner was like, nah, fuck you guys? Well, no, it was it was not a well-maintained space. They weren't getting a lot of help from the owner, and they kept dumping money into the place. And eventually it was just like, we just can't do it anymore. Like, I they just couldn't afford to do it anymore. I don't blame them. If my landlord isn't helping and I'm doing all the freaking cosmetic work to make something good, Yeah, I'd, I'd find another place. Because I assume they're doing somewhat decent. Well, I mean, the that's only great. pizza shop. No, there's, 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 there's two. two? No, there's three. There's more pizza places than there are liquor stores. I guess there is. I, yeah, I think I only know two liquor stores here. There's, there's only one in Bandera. Yes, there's one close, but it's not there's in. There's two down that way in yeah. Pipe Creek. So they drink more. <laughs> That's where I'm going to party. <laughs> oh, that sucks. I really enjoyed their pizza. I mean, don't get me wrong. The other pizza places really aren't bad, but it's just not as good. It just doesn't hit the spot anymore. Although one time at one, I was calling in to do a pickup at one of those pizza places, and like I had a Cabo and a Pearl both sitting on my chest at the same time, and I was having a hard time talking because they kept knocking the air out of me. And the girl goes, "What's wrong?" I was like, "I got two dogs on my chest," and she's like, "Bring them." So I did to the pizza place. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> and they, and like other customers and this is how you can tell you're in the country is because like everyone brings their dog everyone everywhere. brings their dog everywhere they actually finally had to put up a sign at the grocery store saying hey unless your dog is a service dog don't bring them they started doing that over where i live because every dog is now an emotional support animal yeah they're not the same as a service animal two different things entirely do your research definitely find out what you're supposed to do yeah but then people just start bringing their dogs like you got a little yorkie in your purse going grocery shopping at h-e-b like, let's be real. What What is this dog actually doing other than you didn't want to leave it at home? Yeah, I mean, they're not going to cue into anything. They can, if they're trained. Let me let me do something real quick. Uh, All of the lights. Da, 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 da. Make sure you get my good side. There we go. We were getting a bit more shadow than I wanted. Oh. Uh, coffee filter. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't get that. So coffee filter, you know the purpose of a coffee filter. Mm-hmm. To drain everything out. Mm-hmm. Well, the whole point of the saying coffee filter is I have something really inappropriate I shouldn't say. Why don't you just say it? <laughs> this is me we're talking about here. Why aren't you just saying it? Because we're recording. Fucking own it, bro. Fine. It'd be half blackface. 
They're like, we'll have to cut that. <laughs> so I said, it's just all you, we're going to connect back to this point and be like, we should have listened when he said coffee. <laughs> but the warning was there. You at least have two different points to jump from. Or I'll leave it in. Or you leave it in. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time. I have left some stuff in. I know. That probably took you by surprise. It did. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, whatever. I said it. I have no problem with it. But, so, we know Hamas is going on. Israel, Hamas, all that stuff. Yeah. Which I don't want to... Didn't we talk about this last I don't want to touch on that. Yeah. I want to talk about the aid that was brought. So, Germany hasn't changed their logo, their logo on their planes, pretty much since Napoleon. So Hitler's used this logo. Yeah. So this plane lands over there for for humanitarian aid. Everybody's freaking out. They're like, the Nazis are coming back. Oh God! I'm not even kidding. Oh like, this God! Is, this is a real fucking thing. People are worried about. Apparently, it's like Germany's gone all over the world in similar C five, C one third, like these type planes. And you just now saw this. German logo on the side of the plane. They've used it on medals. Nobody's cared. They've yeah. used somehow because they use a historical emblem that's been on their planes for ever. To go to Israel. Yeah, to go to Israel. So Jews, Germans. I, well, I just I just saw where they took a uh, they sneakily took a statue of what Robert E. Lee and they melted it down. Where was like, this? I, for, I forget where. In the States somewhere? Yeah, it was somewhere in the... Obviously, it was somewhere in the States. No one outside of the States care about Robert E. Lee. No. No, the only reason I'm saying this is because... Shoot, a couple years back... I'm, I'm going to have to look into this and talk more about it later. But someone took a Robert E. Lee statue. Like, literally just sheared it off. Some... I think it was Alabama or somewhere. Alabama, Mississippi. Somewhere there. Cut it off. And it made its way to fucking Brazil. So, fun fact, after the Confederacy lost, a bunch of Confederates went to South America. I didn't know that. So, kind of like how a lot of, like... Germans Germans escaped like Peru, Yeah, escaped area. out. It, yeah, That's so apparently... Private bunker. A bunch of, like, Confederates, like, dipped out and went to South America because they didn't, like, agree with... And they were like, no, we, we wanted... We didn't. We don't agree with joining back with the union, so we're gonna dip out. Jeez, I didn't know that. That's something new. So yeah, no. Th- this is this is how my brain works because I didn't remember that until just now. Until just now, <laughs> and then it, like popped back in. And I was like, oh yeah, fun fact. Did you know a flight from Peru to San Antonio is thirty two hours with multiple hops? Really? Yep. Because you can't just fly straight. Huh? You seriously have to make multiple hops. I was like. We live in a modern day. What do you mean you left two days ago? Yeah. It's like, well, because I had to hop from here, and it was like a four-hour drive from my house to the airport, but I had to take a taxi because they don't have vehicle storage there that's safe. So he just hopped from point eight, and he's a missionary that's lived down there for 20-plus years to the point when he came back last year, he actually got arrested in Florida. Really? Because apparently he had outstanding warrants for... I guess he he was talking to someone at a bar and an uh, aggravated assault, essentially. So his wife and his whole family lived down there. He's been down there for 20-plus years. So 20 years ago, about 2000, he had this incident that happened in a different state. It wasn't even Florida. So he comes back, gets arrested, and he's like, I don't know what I did wrong. Oh, well, you have a warrant back from 2000. It's like, okay. Hey. Um, for what? So they can't even find... Dude doesn't even exist anymore. Dude's dead. Yeah. That this happened with. And he's in jail for like 90 days. Really? He was only supposed to be here for two weeks. Turned into three months. Well, that's dick. So they at least worked with him. Changed a bunch of his flight stuff. Canceled him. I mean, they were actually pretty decent. He was like, I mean, okay, I'll go. If, if I did wrong, let's go. So he goes there gets his license and all that after he gets exonerated but he's able to actually minister to people that are in jail yeah at the time he's like well yeah i did this i did that this happened this happened he explains a little bit of his story and he brings three people to christ and 
everyone this day is just getting, all right, you're released on bail, you're released on bail, or you're just pretty much, you're good, you're just on probation. Yeah. And then it comes down to nobody ate their lunch. So it became kind of like one of those thoughts is like, if I eat my lunch, I'm not going. Because one person ate their lunch and was like, nope, you're going back to jail. She was like, I guess I'm not eating my lunch. So judge goes on lunch, comes back, and he's the first one seen after lunch. Judge looks at the case and is like, 20 years ago? Really, you're having me try this case? Is the gentleman even still alive? Like, they're both older. They're both 60 now. Would have been 60. And so he was 40. All this happens, and the judge is like, you're on probation. I mean, you're a missionary. I'm not going to tie you to the state that you have no connection to. Right. But you got to make weekly calls to your probation officer for the next, like, six months. So, long story short, he does that, goes back, never gets to do his check-in with the church here. Church is like, we want nothing to do with you because of this. He was like, I've, what are you talking about? I've done nothing wrong. It was insane. So another church here adopted him into their missionary stuff. Yeah. It's like, that's insane. Something you did 20 years ago still affects you today. Yeah, and, I mean, that's that's the nature of it. Something that you do, you know, even in your youth, can follow you for the rest of your life. Oh, yeah. Easily. I mean, you look at the Arkansas kid. Um, BLM was happening, and he came over with his AR. Oh, yeah. I can't remember his name, but... Even in his court case, they brought up his KD kill ratio in Call of Duty. Yeah, that was super fucking crazy goofy, dude. It was like, man, y'all are reaching. It was like... Really reaching. He stated he was here to administer aid, and he had more aid on him than weapons. Yeah. Like, I'm still going to protect myself, but there's there's still aid I'm trying to administer to both sides. And he did. Yeah, he, he like there, there were cases of him doing it. On both sides. It's not, oh, you're this, you're, no. Yeah, he wasn't biased. It was no different than this happened here in San Antonio. Um, was it the, uh, was it the the drag shows at, I guess it was at a library or something? Everybody was losing their mind, or it was a, it was a venue downtown, I know that. And a bunch of, I guess it was like, they're calling themselves Texas Militia, showed up. So a bunch of veterans were like, oh, fuck no. Like, whether I agree or not, I fought for them to have their right yeah, no, to do I'm whatever. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. And that's where I stand. It's that's like, where I would be. Like, I, it doesn't matter whether or not I agree with you. The fact of the matter is, is that you got the right to do this shit, and I fucking signed up for you to get that right. I fucking swore to the Constitution. I think there was like 70-ish veterans just standing out there. Cops, veterans, First, sec- First and Second Amendment people just standing out there. Because fully I- kitted out. It was like... Shit's about to pop off. Nothing popped off. It was like, think about it. People that believe or don't believe are out here protecting these people, and Texas militia, I'm only using that because that's what they're calling themselves, show up and like, we don't agree with this. Stop ruining our state. It was like, look, are they physically hurting you? Yeah. If they're not, mind your own business. When they start hurting you, okay, that's a different thing. But I'm here to protect... All ways of life. Love everyone equally. Not saying you have to like them. Oh, my hip and my knee are hurting. <laughs> that fucking front is blowing in. All I know is that, and I'm that just looks hurting. a little bit close to one of those no-no positions. Oh, man. It just hurts, bro. <laughs> I just want to toss that leg over. <sighs> Did I tell you about the cop at the gas station? What he actually looks like? No. Okay, so let me tie them into what's going on. Okay. So, I'm on my way over to Mike's house, and... It's pouring, everybody's flying down the road, it's raining, apparently we're invincible when it rains. So we're going down the road, I pull up at the normal Shell gas station I always pull up at, go in there to grab a monster, a little pick-me-up, and this dude tells me, obviously on drugs, obviously something, he was, he was something. But I go in there, grab the monster, and it's a new one, so I'm looking at it, and he said, one of two ways it's gonna end. One of us is going to the hospital, and no, one of us is going to jail, the other's going to the hospital. How good is your health care? I still don't know he's talking to me. <laughs> like, oh, you're just, 
I'm reading the back, and there's not a lot of room in that gas station. Like, no, it's a small station. It's a small station. So I have maybe two and a half, three feet, I'd say. Enough for a fire were to happen. You can yeah. get out as long as no doors are open. So I'm sitting here. I didn't even know there was a cop in here. I saw the cop, the sheriff car outside, but I didn't think anything of it. So I go in there, grab it. I put it back. I was like, I don't want this one. And then the cop goes, all right, it's time for you to leave. Now you have my attention. What's up? What's going on? And now it kicks. I was like, oh, my health my healthcare is actually really good. <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? The cop had curly Q must only mustache. Only really? mustache. Like for, he might have had like a little triangle here. Oh man. But you you want to talk about you think Texas cop with a cowboy hat? That is the epitome of what the big belly Oh fuck like, yeah. Tan, the black belt, and he seriously looked like he should be in the Andy Griffin show. Like, just with a lot more weight. Or Dukes of Hazard. That's a, oh, he looked like Dukes of Hazard with the mustache. Boss Hog? Yep. No, not Boss Hog. It, what was the other one called? It Boss was, Hog was the top guy. Who was the. I don't know, it was Junior. No, Junior was his son. What was the cop's name? I thought it was Boss. I didn't. No, Boss Hog was the guy who, like, own the pl- the pig farm or oh, the plant you're right. or whatever. I I am, I am fucking reaching back into my childhood for remem- this shit. Like I do not remember. One hundred percent looked like the cop. One hundred percent. It was hilarious. Fuck. And then he escorts the dude out. And now I'm floored. I forgot what I was in the gas station for. At this point, I was like, I don't remember. And I just walk out and I drive the rest of the way. And like two miles after I left, I was like, I wanted that monster. That's <laughs> that's what I wanted. <laughs> you should have you should have gone through the drive through gas station. I don't even know where that's at. Right here. Right here. At the end of I, I kept the looking for the drive through gas station. Didn't know it was right there. Yeah, at the inf- that gas station right at the entrance, if you like you know where the car wash is? Yeah. If you like go around behind the car wash, like you're and head back towards sixteen, you can see the entrance to the gas station right there. Well, it looks like I found my stop when I move out to Medina. It's fucking, it, like, it's, I, I go there all the time. Yeah, I don't have to get out of my car now. I've, I'm like, normally I have the dogs with me and they give Pearl and Cabo snacks. <laughs> Check. <laughs> Five stars. <laughs> I also go there to get my uh, Bandera uh, newspaper. I haven't read a newspaper in so long. I literally get it because it's the only place I can find the local news. Holy cow. I haven't I haven't physically read like paper newspaper in years. It's it's my pooper paper. It's your pooper paper. So when you run out of toilet paper you wipe with it? No, I mean it's just something to read while I'm on the pooper. If I don't want to like scroll through my phone. Because that's what we all do now, right? Like every everyone does it now, right? Like everyone's like on their phone on the pooper. Like I can no longer imagine life without with, without yeah. the pooper. Yeah. The pooper that... phone. That makes me think. It was like, because when I leave my phone away, and I was like, I'm sitting on the toilet, I was like, oh, damn it. Well, I guess this is going to be a short Yeah, food. yeah. I have literally squeezed it, walked all the way across my house to get the phone <laughs> to come back, because by God, I am going to be entertained while I relax and quietly enjoy this poo. I've done the same thing at least once. <laughs> At least once. I I refuse. I refuse to be bored while I'm pooing. My <laughs> uncle, my uncle takes it to the next level. He has a TV in there. A TV yep. mounted on a swivel with like a hard drive plugged into the back with a bunch of movies on it. The master for the new house we're going to build, 100% I'm going to have one in there for the tub. Nice. And the shower. Nice. So, you should have a you should have a shower gun. I have one now. I need a container for a shower gun. I just put it in a plastic bag. Yeah, I want like a sealed container, like a proper sealed one. Yeah, I definitely agree on that one. And I need to get I need to get a little thirty eight for that. Because, yeah, a little snub nose. Little... Yeah, I'm I'm more comfortable putting a revolver in the shower than I am an automatic. Yeah, having a yeah, there's a lot less cleaning. Yeah. Uh, so speaking of None of what we were talking about. Nothing about what we were talking about, but I wanted to cycle back because I was thinking about this earlier. Um, I was watching a a podcaster, and he was commenting on how fucking ridiculous it was that Castle Law was a thing. 
He's he's over there in Europe, right? And he he's like, this is stupid. You've made it legal for people to, and I'm quoting, murder people over someone Hold on, stealing you're gonna have your to TV. Pause. Because oh, I gotta go someone... grab a beer before I listen to this. Here, heresy. This is insane. I'll come back. I don't like that the lights off in your garage because I hit everything on the way to the fridge. <laughs> you could have turned the light on. The I automa- tried. The automatic didn't come on. Nope, and I couldn't find the light switch. It's it's right next to the door. I reached and where I the touched. light switch is. I touched. It wasn't there. I tried. You sure you ain't special? Oh, I'm definitely special, obviously. I don't know how long that's been in my fridge, so good luck. I don't know. It was a different beer, and I was like, 6.9, let's try this. What could go wrong? <laughs> Pearl's helping. Michael, oh, that actually, the foam tastes pretty good. I mean, it, I think I recall that one being a good one. It's best before 2025, so we're good. Interest rates will go down on houses before then. Hey! But, okay, I'm listening. All on board. Castle Law's wrong. We're murdering people. Dude's in Europe. I'm still, again, perturbed hearing oh, yeah. parts of this. So, he was he was talking about, like, you know, weird loopholes in laws. And part of the loophole was, like... Because I have a lot on this just from history and stuff that's happened, so... So, he was referencing Castle Law, and he was, like, blown away. He's like, how can you... And, again, I'm quoting... Just murder people for coming into your home and stealing a TV, and I'm like, I'm 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 sorry. And he's like, fucking Americans just okay with murdering people. There's a difference between coming into my house and breaking into my house. Two different things entirely. But at the same point, there's a populace in the United States that you ask them. Ask women specifically, because that's where I've seen most of the videos and most of this talk going. Would you allow your significant other, your partner, your husband to have a gun? Well, no, that's what cops are for. Well, what if someone breaks in the house and tries to kill him? Well, he could have like a bat or nunchucks or something. Okay, what if there's five of them and they're they're going to kill him? Well, no one said they were going to kill him. They're, lady, they're breaking into your fucking house. What do yeah. you think's happening? Yeah. Like... What if they murder him and then have their way with you? Well, that maybe a small gun. It's like that. That's that same mentality. It's not meant for. Oh, I'm just going around killing people. No, it's it's no. for protection. Yeah. Like the older gentleman. I don't remember the state, but someone broke into his house, and he warned them. He's like, "It's time for you to leave. Take what you want and be gone." And they continued down. Both of them were armed. Double barrel shotgun. Old double barrel shotgun. I know because the the news article, this was years ago now, he broke his shoulder, he broke his ribs. Like, all this was ruined after he shot this thing twice. Killed both gentlemen. He warned them first off. Yeah. Take my stuff and leave. He's already just like, just go. Just get what you need and leave. But they proceeded to come down his hallway. He's like, it's too late. And he pulled the trigger on the first one. So the second one starts shooting back. He had some bullet holes in him. And then dude starts walking down because gentleman's on the floor. I think he's like 80 years old. Like, dude's older. Double barrel, side by side. That's not a fun gun to shoot. No. And then in a hole. So he got, he got the other guy, called the cops. He was like, hey, I'm bleeding out. Starts listening to all his medical issues. He's on blood thinners. He ended up surviving, but the family took the gentleman to court. He ended up, the gentleman actually ended up winning. But then we have, on the opposite side of the spectrum, someone, another, they're calling it a cat burglar because he was trying to come in through his uh, skylight. Yeah. And the dude ended up bleeding and suing the homeowner. Yeah, because he, like, fell through the skylight, fell fell onto, like, a glass table, I think. Yep. And sued the homeowner and won. And won. It's like so. It's not. First off, it's not all America that's like, oh, well, everyone's, everyone's castle wall or everyone's this. No, it's we we care to protect ourselves. Like at the end of the day, that's I'm I'm keeping me and mine safe. Like that's that's where it's at. I can't believe. I can't believe. I can't under. I can't see where he's coming from. Where nobody has guns. Well, but to call people murderers. Murderers. 
Yeah, that's that's a stretch. That, that's the that's the shit. And this is what triggered me is because it, it gave me flashbacks of the people calling me a murderer because I was a soldier and I went overseas, right? Yep. And it's like you're a murderer. Oh, I and I'm like, it. excuse me. Every time you get off the plane in uniform, oh, you're a baby killer. You're a murderer. It's like, have we not grown enough to realize that I'm just doing a fucking job? Like, I'm not here to murder people. I'm trying to serve my country. At the end of the day, I'm trying to serve my country and make a paycheck. Yeah. I'm not like, oh, I can't wait to go overseas and go kill people. Fucking kill people. <sighs> but we also live in the same society that a lot of people serving now don't think 9-11 happened. <sighs> so what is the saying with ancient Rome? Like, <laughs> everything dies at a certain age, essentially. Yeah. Like, <sighs> Speaking of Rome, I'm going to take this in a different direction. All ears, because I think about Rome at least once a week. You didn't see that thing going around? I saw something going around, but anyways. Well, let me do mine, because um, it's shorter than yours. I okay, whatever. Do do your thing. Do your short thing. No, so apparently there's like this trend going around right now, where it's like you ask a guy how often they think about ancient Rome. That That's literally it. And I was like, someone asked me that at work. I was like, at least once a week? I mean, we have aqueducts. We have piping. We have, like, we have all these things that we use now. I mean, we have Julius Caesar still being taught today. I pearl munching. Pearl's just gonna eat whatever. I think that was a bug. But yeah, that there's a trend going around where everybody's like, "Oh, how often do you think about ancient Rome? Meat once a week, easily." I never think about ancient Rome. Oh, you're talking about it now. Yeah, I, now I'm talking about it. But I was reading an article. Apparently, archaeologists are all in a tizzy because a tizzy huh a tizzy we're going with the word tizzy i love tizzy <laughs> uh are all up in a tizzy because uh classified uh imagery got released from the u.s government that shows like hundreds like over 300 roman forts in the middle east from all this imagery that they took back in the 60s and 70s so why are they in a tizzy about that? Because it was leaked? No, it wasn't leaked. It was declassified. Mm. And they're in a tizzy about it because they didn't see the, the surveys, anything like these surveys before, and now they're excited because they have more archaeological dig sites. I don't think that's a tizzy. Yeah, I mean, a tizzy is, like, excited, you know. Uh, I guess we can use that word. It's a bad word, but... What's bad about tizzy? The way it flows off your tongue. I love the way it flows off my tongue. How does it flow off your tongue? Tizzy. Say it again. Tizzy. I didn't hear you. Tizzy. Fuck you. (laughs) (laughs) Such a build up. (laughs) Oh, fuck. We're a pair of morons. Oh, shit. Oh, so, other thing I want to talk about. All right. C5s. Which rendition of them? OG C5s or, like, like liter- modern day with stuff flying around? all of the C... Like, the entire life cycle of the C5. Okay. Because it's just awesome. It's a brick. It's, it's, a, it's a fucking a, brick it's a gi- on wheels and engine. I, I So, my barracks was on uh, what used to be called Fort Hood. Uh, West Fort Hood. Um, I forgot they changed the name. Google Maps still calls it Fort Hood, by the way. Really? Yep. Oh, okay. I I, I forgot what they called it now. I can't remember all the new. I know they names. changed it. I can't. I know they've changed like all these. It base was around. Names. It's sad we can do this, but it come down to when BLM pushed all this stuff and a bunch of things were changed and yeah. Confederacies, all the yeah. So yeah, they changed it. I don't remember what's changed to along with the twenty other bases. Well, because Hood wasn't like a Confederate, was he? I don't think so. Uh, maybe they just, since they're changing all the other bases to like well, freedom, so America. I think, I think this is genius because it's like, well, we need to change a couple of them because they have Confederacy names. So if we change all of them, none of the state actors will know where what we're talking about anymore. I think Hood was changed because of all the shootings that happened and ev- in such a short time. I think that's why that was changed. Because they're always in the fucking news. Yeah. And they're Hood's like, in the news. Hood's in the news. Well, shoot. I rode my bike up there one time with the club. My bike has the little reader 
pretty much it's it's a wireless key fob. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't read it. I had to call Indian, get my little manual input code so I could start my bike. It wouldn't read the RF because of whatever frequency is running out there. Oh, man. Yeah, they, someone must have been fucking running a jammer. Like, it was mine. It was the president's. There was a couple of other Harleys. Like, we both had Indians. We found, we fixed ours. Yeah, someone must have been. So that used to be an issue when we were running shit out at the uh out in iraq is we would go to like do testing or whatever and we wouldn't be able to make like radio connections and shit because someone would be running one of the one of the um ied jammers off yeah. of the convoy and it'd be fucking wiping out everything, everything. no but the c5s are bad so, yeah, they're fucking and they started out fucking bad as shit oh yeah because the air force is like we need something that can carry some shit and it was like <laughs> Boeing, right? I think it's a Boeing. I think it's a Boeing product. It's a Boeing platform. But yeah. like, I remember seeing like original like imagery and footage of it, and it's like, okay, that's a shiny son of a bitch. But like, no, I'm, I'm gonna go back. Their original blueprints were like, it's a it's a bigger plane than the C one thirty. Essentially, government came back. We need bigger. We want to carry more vehicles. So that came into longer. Well, now we need more engines. Now we need more this. It was always, but more. So, it can carry two Abrams. Yep. Um, and people. But what I was saying was, is what what I was saying was, is that I was on Westport what I was Hood. was saying. And I remember sitting in my barracks for the first time and watching one of these behemoths do a touch and go on our runway. Because it would just come. It's and frightening. It hang in the air. It would just like. And you just see the wings. And the fucking window would shake. Yep. And you're just like, how is this thing moving? Because it's coming down. Like, there's like this has got to be like sci-fi shit, right? It's moving because of lift. That's how it's moving. How is, it li- how is there any lift Enough there? Enough movement forward and aerodynamics make it move. I mean, I know the... the I conceptually know the concept. Okay, well, that's as far as I but, got. But, <laughs> like, viscerally, like, looking at it in the air as it's just like... Uh, this whale. Well, let's switch topic. Keep that topic because I still want to go back to it. But look at trucks back in forties. Uh, <laughs> Time. Goodness. Perfect. We tried that. <laughs> Performed. Practice. Executed. <laughs> <laughs> Performed. Practice. Executed. But older trucks were smaller, and now we have like your truck. It was like it's a fucking behemoth on the road. Yeah, I got a small truck. Well, no, but we look back to the 90s, and you're like, oh, it's so cute. Oh, it's I so know, tiny. right? Like, I know. today's Tundra alone, the older Tundras are the size of the Tacomas now. Well, I was, like, the old Tacomas were, like, itty-bitty little things. Yeah, they're, and like, now, a four-fucking-ranger. Now the, now the Tacomas <laughs> are, like, the Chevys used to be. Yep. It's insane. It's the half-cab. And then, like, yeah, no, my truck is large. Yeah, but then my dad's is larger. I know compensation. It's, fucking, it's his it's bald head. It's fucking huge. Yeah, he's he's super bald. He's compensating for his lack of hair. No, yeah. I'm gonna tell him that. And for being short. And for being short. This coming November when we go and see him. Yeah. <laughs> Renfest. So, is your truck compensating for your bald head? I support this. I'm gonna do it. If he doesn't watch this beforehand. <laughs> what are you doing next weekend? I don't know. I know we got to get with the Barndo people to build out. So I got to schedule them. Once they come back with an estimate of how much my house is going to cost that I schematicked out. But the C5s, definitely crazy fucking things that just. I need to step this back. The right. reason I was asking is because it's going to be cold next weekend. We can shoot for camping. Let's shoot for camping. <laughs> camping sounds good. One of these, but camping. <laughs> yes. I'm super out of our on board. Mind. Oh, my dog. Yeah, she's still over there. She's um, existing. Yeah, she's good dog. Yeah, but the fact you can fit two Abrams. You can fit two Abrams. Abrams are fucking huge. Abrams are so big that that like they made the the modern Abrams so large that they're actually trying to downsize it with the newest Abrams because most bridges across the world cannot support their weight. Yep. Can you just just fucking imagine that? Like, it's a tank so heavy Diesel that... engine, by the way. 
diesel turbine engine, though. Still diesel. Yeah. It's the only type of fuel that's actually common across the world. So that's the other reason that they're trying to modernize is because it's also so big that it has the shortest logistical change out of every piece of equipment we have, pretty much. <laughs> I'm just I'm going in my head thinking about all the historical stuff I've learned about vehicles. Like John Deere made a tank. Yeah, like, yeah, he did. We start going through all these just... The military definitely does it. Fat Electrician brought it up many times. Mm -hmm. Many other YouTubers brought it up. I think Angry Cops has done it a couple times. But you start looking back and it's like, what is what is our youth doing today? What are they like super into? Yeah. It's like 90s video games. What started happening? Drone pilots. It was like, oh, okay, well, we now had 9-11, drone pilots, perfect. We can explore more with less casualties. Well, and then now like every single vehicle has some kind of like super awesome electronics on the inside mm -hmm. right like we pretty did much you, have did VR you ever get to the, the to the striker yes like and it had the the turret with yeah. the like yeah with the vr essentially yeah because it's it's literally tell it's telegraphing essentially telemetry that's what it's to the telemetry eliminating telemetry it's eliminating telemetry eliminating. Telemetry. 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 So, I forgot the fucking word. Telemetry? Telemetry. So, it uses telemetry to actually see where things are, and it starts mapping it out. And then, they put a camera there to not just visually show you, but then show you the distance. So, you're on this turret, and you can move around with it, and actually see the distance without eyeballing it. And it's like, oh, well, that's six inches. No, that's actually like seven and a half. And it's like, oh, okay. Good to know. Yeah. And thus turning us all into liars on what six inches actually is. Six inches. I have my wife's ruler at home. <laughs> it's this big. <laughs> you over here with them bamboo penis. <laughs> yeah. Real thin. Hollow. I do want to plant bamboo. I just don't want to plant bamboo. It's a hard... So, it, I have very fond memories when I was a kid. Of... And that's why I want to plant bamboo. Yeah. Like, I have very... But the problem being is... Okay, let me finish one statement before I start in on the next, right? Woo! So, uh... one time, we're over here driving. Did you know this person won this... And at Woo! work last week... You tell them. <laughs> yeah. But I have very fond memories as a child. Like, there was bamboo surrounding my grandma's property, right? And Great us, privacy fence, by the way. Us and a bunch of kids going in through the paths and the bamboo yep. from animals and grabbing them and beating each other viciously with them because that's what you do <laughs> as a child. You fucking leave welts. Everything's a sword when you're a kid. Like, I love bamboo because how fast it grows for privacy fence and its own nature. But if you don't maintain it, holy shit, it's a wildfire. It fucking it's gone. It's gone. Like you seriously have to maintain it. Yeah, you got you got my my uncle ended up tearing all of that bamboo out because he got tired of fucking I was going to say I don't it. remember it being there. No, no, it's all gone. It's like all gone. I seriously want to get bamboo for a portion, <laughs> but I just I got to maintain it. Dude, so funny funny story. I was going through uh <laughs> Oh, you haven't told it yet. I seriously was going to go for full fucking I know. slap. But I was like, prepared. I, I restrained myself. I was prepared. That turns know. into a dangerous fucking cycle. No one's happy. No. <laughs> I'm okay, Cabo. <laughs> He's like, is your nuts okay? Mine are gone. <laughs> Damn. That's why you hate my dog. I mean, yeah. we We have established this. Okay. So, you were saying. Hold on. I got. I got oh, Cabo, Cabo Lovins. Cabo Sweet Lovin. little Cabo in Mike's lap. Yeah, lick his face. We know where your tongue's been. Oh, yeah, all over that crotch. <laughs> and that asshole. Bought Nutella. I like Nutella. 
Oh. It's like a spread for sandwiches. Yeah. No, I, I was trying to remember where I was at. I wasn't paying attention to what you oh, said. Oh, good, because I was going to start going into, we bought Ruth peanut butter and jelly, and she fucking loves it. Well, of course. She's a kid. Fucking peanut butter and jelly and fucking kids go together like peanut butter and jelly. Like, <laughs> like corn and peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> You say the darndest things. <laughs> so I was uh, I was over at Ash Daddy's house, fucking <laughs> digging through it. I uh, still love that it's just been labeled Ash Daddy. Uh, uh, and then I remembered something else I wanted to cycle all the way back to. But I want to um, make Ash Daddy shirts. Fuck yeah! That would be all. Fuck yeah! <laughs> it, it's, just, it's just a, a picture of a pile of ash. Yeah, yeah, I'm super on board. Um, <laughs> I'd wear like, that shirt word, especially on the podcast some point is down the line is like Ash Daddy and then the years he lived it's yeah. like in remembrance of Ash Daddy with the name pending logo <laughs> I'm super on board um, but yeah I'm going through his house and oh, okay. oh that's a good time here we go now Pearl's got a spot. <laughs> Woo! Rewind. <laughs> so, Ash Daddy. Going through Ash Daddy's, and I'm going to reiterate this, uh, because... I didn't hear it the first time. So, I came across um, a sealed manila envelope, one of the full-size... Like, envelope pa- or envelope? Is it potato and potato? I don't know, possibly. Okay. Um, and... It had a copy of his resume in it. Okay. Saying I'm a badass Ooh. from stage. You have it. I have it. Totally Hold on. Gonna He's going to bring it here. We're going to see this resume in the envelope. It's Manila, by the way. Anyone that's watching. So he's going to bring it, show it. It'll be like show and tell, but from Ash Daddy. I don't know if he can find it. He's over here making grunting in the back. But he's going to find it. Going to stay tuned. Come back here. He's going to show us this cool manila envelope of Ash Daddy's resume. Resume? Resume? That's weird. Resume and resume are both spelled the same but pronounced differently. What other words are like that? Race cars the same forward and backwards. Cat forward spells cat. Cat backwards spells tack. I'm trying to think what other cool words are like that. I don't know. I'm definitely, definitely confused now. Nope. Bye, Pearl. Pearl, where are you going? Oh, here's Mike with the... Ripped manila envelope. I couldn't open it. <laughs> I didn't have a knife. That's but, not true. I did have a knife. I just didn't think about it. This is not for you. This is not for you. Well, let me find a way back to lay down. Yeah, right? Oh, here we go. 20 minutes later. <laughs> right there. Right, right there. there. Right, right there. there. Right there. Right there. Excellent. <laughs> Goodness. Third time's the charm? Yeah, here we go. Manala... Envelope. Manila envelope. Oh, with the resume spelled the same way as resume. Holy cow. This paper is aged. <laughs> Look at the paper clip. Oh, I see the paper clip being <laughs> rusted. There's actually rust on the paper. <laughs> Kabu, I need you to get off me. You bud. just need to frame this. <laughs> Houston, Texas. Dude, but like I love like the the hold on. <laughs> I'm gonna read the profile. Aggressive. Aggressive. Aggressive detail oriented problem solver with twelve years experience in electronics manufacturing industry, including nine years with the Fortune Dude, you Fortune five hundred company. You start with aggressive, you, you now have my attention on your resume. Like let's <laughs> let's be real. Like intricate detail oriented aggressive oh, okay oh, okay I'm, I'm on board yeah like lead me dude like this is freaking awesome this is history you pass on to your kids <laughs> it's like, so fucking cool <laughs> like the more you go through here 
operated and performed maintenance on material handling equipment, comma, forklift, swing reach, and pallet jacks. <laughs> this this could seriously just be a story. And then you go to his education. It's like, okay, you keep going. Lotus beginner class. What the fuck is what Lotus? What is fucking Lotus? Facilitator training. Okay. Effective communicate like. All this stuff, he's forklift and electric pallet jack training. It's like, you go through, and that's not it. It continues. Oh, it's two. He has two of them. I guess so that they have a copy. Yeah. But this is, when I saw that, like, I saw, I read that oh, beginning. One's paper clipped. One's stapled. But... I mean, that was... Two are stable. My bad. That's when he worked at Compaq, right? Yeah. Like, this is... This is really cool. This is, like, the history you save. And I like how the front paper is so faded, but the middle paper isn't. Like, yeah. You can't see it on camera, but you, you can see the little rust. Mm-hmm. Thing. It's like, that's freaking awesome. I would frame this bad boy... And just hang it somewhere in my... In front of the fucking toilet. I just like, love that somewhere. first one. It's, like, aggressive. aggressive. I was like... I I love this. And it's so 90s, right? It's aggressive. I can't forget that out here. It'll get ruined. I won't forget that out here. Oh, and I also came across his... Custom... I don't even know if I have. Oh, my goodness. Thumb sucker. I got... St- Stoned and I missed it. Sarah Cynthia, Sylvia Stout, Stacy Brown got to. Dude, I remember making these. I remember making these. Like the same time I was making these, I had an old Nokia phone and recorded like a snippet of something from the radio. <laughs> it was just like, you're always ready for this. Like, always freaking ready for it. At the time, it's like, your, your phone's always fucking ready for the song to come on the radio. And you go, everybody, shut up! Record, and then it records a piece of the song. And then someone always fucking talks. Always fucking talks. Yep. You hear a mumble in the background. Yep. Rah, 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 and you're, rah, That's rah. awesome. I would seriously just get an attachment for my car <laughs> so I could listen to... Oh. Like, it's, it's fucking ridiculous. He had a greatest hits of something as well that I grabbed. Heck yeah. But I also grabbed his old Tandy 1000... Which used to be sold sold at Radio Shack back in the day, Ooh. and two of the games with five and a half inch floppies, five and a quarter inch floppies. My bad. Um, which, <laughs> which I, by the way, I grew up playing, playing games, games. Yeah. on this thing. One of them was so bad that you would plug in the five inch floppy, and you would start the game. And then the actual game would start after you got through the menu and you'd pull the, in, that one and, and you put, put the, the next other one, one in. in. Yep. And you'd immediately die within five seconds. And then you'd switch back. Yep. I never got very far in that game because I got super tired of switching between the two. I'm over here thinking it was like, that's. We grew up on floppy disk games. Yeah! Like, I, I loved it. Now I look at games as like 90 gigs. It's like seriously. What happened to the game that was like kilobytes? But but by the same token, it's like I told you the other day. It's like I ran out of room on my my Steam <laughs> oh, drive. Oh no! So Let me I, buy a terabyte. Yeah, I installed another two terabytes for another Steam drive. Oh no! That that's seriously what I have. I think I have four terabytes on my computer. That's why I got right now. And it's just like, and then I've got like uh, five hundred for the OS. And in, yeah, in, I think my two. OS is 500, and I'm at, like, 300 of just things that needed for the operating system, mm-hmm. which is, the more you think about how much space we actually use, it's kind of actually frightening. I mean, we, we've heard about it over the years with iPhones. iPhones are like, oh, this update comes, and then over the next couple of years, you have, like, you have 10 gigs you can use for normal stuff. So one, one year for Christmas when I was a kid, yeah, I asked for an external hard drive. I still have my OG external yeah, hard drive. Yeah, I still have it. I still have it, and it still works. But it still works. I got my uncle's entire music collection from him at that point, which was over 100 gigs. At the time, that was a fucking lot. That was a fucking ton. Like, you're like, 
I have all the music in the world. You feel that way. And I also went to one of my buddy's places, and he gave me, like, my first iterations of anime. Yep. Like, uh, it, it, like I had never watched anime before. He was like, watch this one, watch this one, watch this one. And I'm like, okay. The first, and it's American anime, was Avatar. That was my first intro to it. My first anime was actually uh, Fully Cooly FLCO. Have you ever seen that one? I think you've talked about it before. It I might like... have talked about that one. So I, I think I actually caught like the last episode on Adult Swim, and I remember hitting my buddy up about it. And he was like, oh, yeah, bro. And then he gave me that one, and he gave me a couple other ones, like one of which was, like, one of which I still remember to this day was, like, super weird because um, it was like this guy was joining this track team because he had this crush on a girl or whatever and then it, like, it was like, like we do it was like super weird like i was like oh, i mean okay i guess i'm watching this you know who that leads me down a couple different ways the lat one I, like i watched death note death note i liked that one i liked the first season yes the first season anything after the first season isn't part of it it's, yeah I, I i know that people have diverging opinions on that I don't. but then have you seen code Geass? No. So Code Geass is like Death Note, but they ended it the right way. Okay. I think the other one I liked was One Punch Man to like... Woo! Man. One... So when I was still in the military, I was doing the One Punch Man exercise. Yeah. I was just like, yeah, fuck it. I want to see if I can... I started watching the anime. Jordan Peterson. Tall, six five six six black gentleman. Coolest fucking person you'll ever meet. He actually just moved back here. Programmer, real fucking nerdy though, but can make a mixed drink like nobody's business. Nice. So definitely want to get him over at some point. But he showed me One Punch Man. He was like, "Oh yeah," and we're we're all in the dorms. We're all drinking. It's it's dorms. If you ever had dorm life, college, military, it's very similar in some aspects. And he was like, "Oh, that I've never more happily sat drinking mojitos and watching anime." I was just like. I'm going to do this. And he was like, oh, ha, ha. He was like, oh, you're serious. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to find a way to do this. <laughs> I ended up doing it for a while. And then I just, I stopped to let myself go. But I loved it. I Yeah. It was, it was freaking awesome. Which leads into joining something because <clears throat> someone you like is in it. I never joined something because someone was in it. I always did something, and then someone that liked me joined it that hated what we were, like, track. I was just like, well, I like running. Sure. I, I run. This is fun. I just, I just go and run. I had multiple girls join the track team throughout my four years just so they could date me. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Like, one was Paige, one was Bethany. One reached out a couple years into mine and Jess's marriage. It was, it was like, oh, I always loved you. Oh, that went as well as you expected. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I'm married? Yeah. Um, I don't know what to tell you. Well, you could have at least invited me to the wedding. It's like, no. It's like, none of this sounds No, this smart. is fucking weird, girl. No. <laughs> she ended up joining the army as an 11 bang bang. Okay. So, I mean, she's, she's loving life now. She's an E5, yeah. E6. Props to her. Oh, she... You want to talk about someone that's hardcore? She's pretty fucking hard. We like we partied together in high school. Definitely fucking yeah. army material, easily. She could have been a marine. Like that's. Uh, I mean, her temperament. I know. I drank while I was in. I mean, drank. <laughs> like like I the me now looks back on it and I'm like I was a functioning alcoholic. Holy <laughs> shit. But it's not functioning alcoholic when you're in the army. It's yeah. like I was You're just doing what everybody else does. Well I yeah, I wasn't drinking at work. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I'm I have i have mentioned this to you I before. was an athletic alcoholic. Well I yeah, no, literally it's like, oh, okay, no, I've I'm done drinking at three in the morning. It's a Sunday, I wake up at five and I go for a run. I had my nap, run time. <clears throat> yeah. But I, I've I brought this up to you before. I might have brought it up on the podcast. I'm gonna bring it up again. I miss the barracks times. Yep. Of just 
Like, because literally, it's like, I've got nothing going on this weekend. I'm bored. I don't want to just sit and play video games. So I would pour myself a glass of Jack and Coke. And by the way, peruse. I, I can't drink Jack and Coke anymore. I just can't. But I would walk out into the barracks and just walk through the barracks until I came across music. And then I would show up at someone's barracks party. But nobody cared. And no one cared. Because I, I brought my own alcohol. Yep. And most of the time, people knew me. And... It was just whatever. And realistically, most of the time, my bottle got left there. At, at least for me, it's like. Well, I didn't. I didn't take my bottle with me, right? Oh, I, I did. I took my bottle because I, I, I would be there for a while. I would walk all the way back down and refill my drink and then walk back See, up. See, our rule was if you're gonna crash someone else's, because we had Marines, Army, Navy, and Air Force all in my barracks. We were calling them dorms. Everybody else was calling them barracks. I was like, it's fucking barracks. It, we're in the military. It's barracks. So we'd all be there. It, it was funny because Air Force would still salute the petty officers because they had birds on their collars. Yeah, it's like, oh my goodness, you, you know, need, you you party with learn. these guys. Yeah, y'all need to learn. <laughs> but no, as long as you brought your bottle, nobody cared. You and because if you, you partook by supplying at the same, because everybody would bring a bottle. So one person would, have, I'd have like three bottles of what I normally drink, and more people would bring bottles, and because it's at my spot. The bottles would just live there. So then we all ended up having way too many bottles. Yeah. Because it was like, yeah. I'm not drinking this. This isn't my go-to. So this person's 40-year scotch he brought lives in my room, and he's the only one that drinks it. Mm-hmm. So we'd have multiple 40 bottles or 18-year bottles that just lived in someone else's room. And there was multiple. We easily had thousands of dollars in everybody's room of alcohol. I uh I remember my first because I had just shown up at the unit and it was that first weekend that I'm at the unit and I've gotten my barracks room and everything like that, right? And there were some folks who were deploying, there were some folks who were going to other units, and my roommate was friends with a whole bunch of folks at that time. Like when I got back he was no longer my roommate because he had yeah, like he gone had... somewhere but um PCS or whatever. But like they I was on the first floor so because I was on the first floor and there was just a greenway in mm-hmm. front of me, it was a perfect spot to set up chairs and everyone to hang out outside, right? Yeah, somehow you just have 12 chairs and, so, and everybody's just like, are I, these all your... Yes. I'll never forget it because like we're all hanging out outside and one of the NCOs, like one of the E5s is hanging out with us and she gets too drunk and passes out on the ground. And everyone's like, I don't know what to do. We can't touch an NCO. And I was like, listen, guys. She's passed out. I'm, I'm putting her in. I'm about to pick her up. Y'all can go with me to put her in her room. But she's not sleeping here on, on the, the ground. ground. Yeah. And I am I am a new fucking private to this unit. I don't know this person. I don't know any of these people. She came. She socialized. She passed out. I'm getting her home safe. And one so way or another. I became one of those people, right? Because one time, and I know I've told you this story, but one time I had a boy of mine who we were in my room drinking moonshine, like properly proper made. Proper moonshine. Proper moonshine. It had been properly turned into apple pie moonshine. Ooh. The right way. Oh. The right way. I want land so I can do that again. It in is, Texas, you can legally do it up to a certain amount. We could do it here if you wanted to. You don't have enough acreage legally. Legally? You need at least six acres. Really? I didn't know that. That was, that came out 2018, I believe. I didn't know that. I'll have to double look, but I know you can make up to 500 gallons, and it's classified as ethanol, up to, up to 500 gallons for personal consumption. Same with wine. It was like, so one of the first years I did it here, I made 500 I mathed it out. Drinkable liquid was 500. I was like, it's only March. <laughs> so anyways, guy, you know, he had never drank moonshine before. First of all, it, he had never drank delicious proper moonshine before. It tastes like fucking apple juice. Right. It's so good. Right? But yeah, I mean, it'll get you fucked up. So I'm taking it easy. And he is like guzzling this shit. And he's hanging out with me. I'm because... in danger. <laughs> because... I'm, I'm totally going to snag that audio snippet. <laughs> I'm in danger. But um, <laughs> he's hanging out with me because I've got folks who are supposed to be coming again to the first floor. It was a yeah, great it's hangout, the hangout spot. Everyone comes You got the there. grill. You probably got a smoke pit up there. Yeah. And, and then I've, you have your front 40. 
It this is, is my land. And I would set up my speakers in the window, and we would play music. Um, I got so fucking petty once because there was all these weeds growing. <laughs> so I cut it all out. I bought Bermuda sod. And I, you can still see the nice patch of grass going to my work building of Bermuda sod, which is slowly grown across. But no joke. It was, it was like a nine by five of what I just, I cut out. Maintenance comes by, security forces like, well, you can't. And I used my buddy's truck, brought all this back, just, just a small little spot. Everybody fucking loved it. And Bates General came out at one point, security forces, and was like, heard you uh, defaced my property. I was like, do you want a beer and sit on the Bermuda where it's nice and comfortable? He was like, I'm not going to. You're not getting in trouble for upgrading my grass. <laughs> like, he seriously thought I destroyed government property, which by definition, yes. But yeah. it was it was a replacement and an upgrade, and he would, dude was on board with it. Yeah. Like, he drank with us. I say drink with He'd come by and at least drink one and have his entourage take him home. Yeah. His personal assistant. But he'd come out and he'd have a beer, he'd barbecue. There was a time he bought, he brought his own smoker. Bro had a fucking smoker, and he smoked brisket. Ooh. Like, ooh. To the point, we're waking up to go to work this Friday, and somehow there's a smoker in front of my Bermuda grass. I'm like, um, and it's smoking, and there's nobody attending it. He went to one of the common room restrooms. He comes back out, full fucking apron. You want to talk about, like, proper dad bod grilling? That's what this dude looked like. It had a, Actually had a luscious head of hair, but dad bod. Damn. It was insane. And he's like, I'm smoking brisket for tonight when you guys all hang out, and then I'll, I'll have a beer and then we'll leave. And no shit, he did that. Like, nobody fucking cared. <laughs> it was insane. You fucking award. Boop. Um, anyways, dude... Moonshine. Moonshine. Oh. About the time everyone starts showing up. He's gone. He's gone. Just fucking gone. Dude forgot his birthday. Yeah. And so every, and I was like, mm, okay, well, he's not good. Uh, y'all give me a hand. I need y'all to open his door. And I, like, fished in his pocket, pulled out his keys. Yeah, put yeah. it, yeah. And he lived, like, like Four two or five doors, doors down. down. Yeah. yeah. And so I picked him up, tossed him over my shoulder, fucking carried him down there. We go in, fucking put. I had grabbed a bottle of water on my way out. Put a bottle of what? Cracked it. Put a bottle of water next to his. Put two pills put, of ibuprofen or Motrin. And, put the put the trash can next to his bed. Fucking locked both his doors. Crawled out his window. Slammed his window shut because it had that automatic lock, yeah. latching window. And everyone's like, "You are really good at this." I was like, "It is not my first time dealing with a drunk, bro." It's just, it's just common courtesy. Like, look if. If you're over at my place and you're getting shwasted, one, you're staying here, so I'm going to ask for your keys. Yes. Or I will forcibly take your keys. Yes. Don't make me get to that point. Yeah. Like, no different than the gas station. I got good medical. <laughs> but, you know, I haven't been to jail in a while either. <laughs> so I'm good with either outcome of this. But, no, you just take care of someone. It was like... Yeah, I mean, take care of people. And, I mean, let's be serious. When I joined, I joined at, like, I made it... To basic training when I was 21. So I was I, 19. I get to AIT and I start drinking. And I drank until I left the Army. There was there was a point in the military where my body couldn't perform without alcohol because I drank that much. I didn't drink that much. Oh, I was drinking nonstop. It didn't matter who I was with. There was a party I was there to the point that when me and Jess finally met, I was trying to slow down my intake like i'd wake up and i'd have to have a beer i realized that i might have a bit of an issue when i went to uh, this was post army right but i went to one of them and i had been to dc yeah and i drank through dc and then i came and and i had slowed down like i had slowed down yeah, my substantially. drinking like but still like i went to my cousin's wedding and someone told my dad afterwards they're like Man, your boy could put the drinks put away. Them down. And like I was like good to drive and yeah. like it, like I was like whatever. I had to talk literally I was talking to someone at work today, one of the blue suitors and 
No joke. It was like we we're, we're talking about D and D. It started with magic. Went over to D and D, and it was like I just don't understand what people can do. It was like, well, what are you so inter- What are you so involved in that you know everything about? Oh, well, sports. So you, I can bring up a person. You can tell me all their stats. Well, yeah. Well, D and D is the same way. Yeah. He was like, give me a scenario. And I was like, okay, you walk into Keep you're going. you're in ruins, and you walk into what is a room. And essentially, the door closes behind you. It's a stone wall behind you now at this point. You have three pedestals in front of you. And the moment the door closes behind you, you see spikes from the top slowly coming down and the water rising below you. What do you do? He's like, I'm looking at the pedestals. What's on the pedestals? What, what's there? He's like, okay, well, each pedestal has a different timepiece that shows a different time. What are... What are you looking past that? Okay, well, what what times are showing? Roll me a perception check. He was like, oh, what's a perception check? I was like, okay, well, now I have you intrigued. This is essentially what D&D is in a way. Like, I gave you what's in my mind. I put it out, laid it in front of you, and now you have to solve this puzzle. And once you get through this puzzle, if you make it or not, that's kind of how it goes. He was like, well, maybe one of these Fridays we could do like a – like a one-off, I guess, or something like that. And I was like, yeah, I mean, it's the same thing as Final, or was it Fantasy Football? Same similar concept. But he was like, maybe I'll give it a try. But a lot, it's it's what you put into it. And that's essentially where he's getting to the point of, okay, well, I'll do that. But we talked about the drinking aspect, and then I'll be done talking. But it was like, oh, well, I just, I can't drink that heavy. I'll have like, like, I want to drink to feel full. How do you drink? And I was like, I drink to feel a buzz when I'm really drinking, and then that's it. Yeah. Like, I really just like the flavor. And when I notice I have the buzz, I start slamming water. Yeah, I, I'd, like, chill out, and this is, like, maintenance. Yeah, it's just maintaining. Because so there's, like, some, not recipe, some schematic, some, something that's, like, for every beer you drink, it's, like, three cups of water. Formula. You're looking yeah, for formula. Yeah, formula. So, I don't know, it's interesting to look at that, see where we came from, talk to other people, see their mindset on things. It's interesting. But, I think that's it. Yeah, I mean, we're going to do the rest of this offline. Yep. So, hey, uh, this is Keeper. Hey. (laughs) That's name pet. No, that's, I'm Keeper. That's Mike. (laughs) This is name pending with his dogs on his land. We love you guys. Hey, remember, fuck that like button. (laughs) And throw a comment below. Let us know how good, how bad we're doing. And we'll see you guys next week.